In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome levitation effect. So let's get into it. So first of all, you want to make sure that you are in an environment where the light is not changing too much. And the reason why is because we're going to film one clip of the top of somebody and then another clip of the bottom of somebody. And if the light has completely changed, then when we try to stitch these two shots together, there'll be too much of a dramatic lighting difference. So you want to film on a cloudy day or you want to try and film in the same type of light or if you can film inside with controlled lighting that's going to give you the best results. But you just want to get a green screen or get a blue screen, place that into your scene and then you want to put your person in front of the camera and act out the motion for the top half of the frame. So you want to pay close attention to the waist up and make sure that you're going through the action of levitating. So look around, pretend that you're floating and you're surprised by what's happening. Then we can cut and we can film the bottom half of this. Now it's really important that the camera is on a tripod by the way, if it's moving, this isn't going to work. So keep the camera on the tripod and keep the camera at the same height for every single shot that you capture. So don't change anything in camera and don't move the camera. So with that first shot captured, we can go on to our second shot. So you can just pull the blue screen or the green screen down so that we're capturing our feet now. And then you start rolling. You can grab two chairs, pull yourself up, and you can dangle your legs around as if you are floating off the ground. So essentially we've got the top half from the previous shot, the bottom half from this shot, and then we're just gonna stitch these two together in the edit. But of course, at the moment, we don't have a clean plate because when we remove the blue screen, we've just got a big gap in our footage. So this is where we can now film the clean plate. So again, don't move the camera, don't change any settings. You just want to pull the blue screen, pull the green screen out of frame, pull the chairs out of frame, and then just film the empty space. It's really important that nothing or no one is in the frame that shouldn't be there because we're going to take our levitating footage and put this onto this background. And then once you've got all three of those clips, you can now drop these into Adobe After Effects and we can begin working on making this really awesome levitating video. So as you can see, we have now got our three levitation layers inside of Adobe After Effects. We've got this top half performance, we've got the bottom half performance, and then we've got the clean plate underneath. So you can see they're all stacked on top of each other. So the next job that we need to do is to remove the blue screen and the rest of this footage that we don't need. So first of all, I'm just going to go up to the pen tool up on the top bar of After Effects, and I'm just gonna draw a mask within this blue screen here. So I don't need the bottom of that, I only need the top bit. So just this bit and then we'll solo this layer. Now from here, we're just gonna go into effects and presets and search for key light. Key light 1.2 should populate there. And then we'll just drag that onto that layer, go into the screen color, use this eyedropper tool to select the blue screen. Then we'll switch over to status. And then you want to adjust the screen gain and screen balance. And the point here is to get rid of this gray. We want the blue screen to be black and we want myself to be white. So I'm gonna pull this down to remove that. So as you can see, if I pull this up, it removes that blue and makes it black. But you can see there's still some gray and the gray is basically somewhere in between perfect and not. So if I go back to final results, you can see it's getting a little bit messy, especially when I zoom in, you can see there's some pixelation down here. And when I turn the layer on, you can see that background layer is gonna bleed through there. So we want to go and clean this up. So we're going to status again. Then we'll go to screen matte and we'll just pull the clip black and the clip white around until we get that perfect black and white. And as you can see, that is a lot better. We've got green, which is not quite perfect, but it's better. So we'll go back to final result and see how that's coming along. You can see that's very good progress. So let's just unsolo that layer. We'll hide the layer below. And you can see that is pretty decent. So I'm just going to get rid of that layer for now. So we'll turn that off and focus on the bottom layer. And again, I'm just going to use this mask tool, use the pen tool to crop out the parts of the frame that I don't care about. So this is the part of the frame that I care about, this bit here. Now again, we'll just drop key light onto this layer. We'll use this eyedropper tool to select the blue screen. Then we'll go to status and we'll just adjust the screen gain and the screen balance until we get that black and white mix that we are looking for. There we go. You can see that is now much better. So we'll turn this back to final result. And as you can see, we've now got two layers doing something completely different, but they're both keyed out. So now what we need to do is we need to connect this layer 
to the bottom layer. So I'm just going to delete the mask on both of those layers. So we'll go into this layer, go into mask and delete the mask there. Then we'll do the same on the bottom layer. So we'll go into here, press M and delete the mask. And now I'm just going to go to this top layer. We'll solo this layer. And I'm just going to draw a mask around the bottom of the t-shirt. So around here. So go back into that pen tool and we'll draw this mask within this blue screen. But we're going to put the bottom of this mask just here. And then you just want to scrub through to make sure that you don't drift out of there. So you should now have this upper half just floating around. Of course, as you can see, because I'm floating up and down, I need to move the mask to follow me. So I'm just going to get to the point where that roughly lines up to where I need it to be. So around here. Then we'll go into that mask and create a brand new keyframe on mask path. We'll go back to the beginning and we'll just nudge this over. Then we'll just work through this video and just nudge this mask so that it is roughly now following my movement. This definitely does not need to be perfect at this stage. This is completely fine to have this rough for now. And there you go. You can see that is doing a decent job of following the action. So if I turn on the background layer, so we've got the top layer and this layer, you can see this is what we have. So it's my upper half now floating on this layer. So now we need to connect the lower half. So let's turn on that lower level. We'll get rid of the bottom layer for now. And we'll turn off the top layer for now as well. And then we're just going to chop off this bottom half. So we're going to the pen tool, select that middle layer, and I'm just going to draw a mask around this part of the frame. So I'm just going to keep the bottom half of my performance here. So I'm only interested in the legs here. Then same thing again, we'll go into mask and mask path. We want to avoid seeing that t-shirt at all costs. So just nudge that down if that happens to creep into the frame. There you go. So we've now got these two layers independent to one another. So if I turn on the background layer and I put some space in between these layers, you'll see we've now got my body floating and you've got my legs floating. So now essentially we just need to connect the two. So to begin with, I'm just going to move the bottom layer just up to connect to the body. And as you can see, it's definitely not a perfect fit. So we're going to have to do something to fix that. But if I just zoom out and we play this back, you can see that's roughly the effect we're looking for. The problem is, though, it looks like my legs are a little bit too big. I think because I leaned forward, they're a little bit higher in the scale. So we'll just pull the scale down just a touch. So that looks like it now belongs back to there. And that now looks more sensible. So I would say the best thing to do now is to go ahead and connect these two. So we'll go through to this first frame. We're going to lock this first layer, so press the padlock. We'll lock the bottom layer, press the padlock. Then we'll go into this middle layer, nudge that into position, so around here. We'll press P on the keyboard to load position, create a brand new keyframe on that position. Then we'll move half a second over and we'll nudge this over to where that needs to go. Then we go half a second over again, nudge that over. For reference, by the way, I'm using this left side of the frame to connect. There's a little bit of an imperfection on the right, but I'll come back and fix that later on. And there we go. Now, if I zoom out and I go back to the very beginning and we play this back, you can definitely see there's some imperfections here that we need to fix. And if we go onto this top layer, we unlock that top layer and we go into the mask. You can see one of the big problems that we've got here is this mask here. So I'm just going to go through to the very beginning and I'm just going to move this mask over to the right just to get rid of this imperfection. And then I'm just going to go to the second keyframe. And again, I'm just going to move that over to get rid of that. Of course, though, if you didn't want to go through this process, then alternatively, we could go to the leg layer. We'll zoom in on that leg layer. We'll go to the puppet position pin tool, which is this pin here. We'll create a point on the left, the middle and the right. Then we'll go into effects, puppet, mesh one, deform. And then you've got puppet pin one, two and three. And you'll notice there is a keyframe created on all of those. Now, every time that drifts over, you can just nudge that pin back into that that now connects. And you can see that's going to be a much better way of connecting this all up. And there you go. If we play this back with that puppet pin animation now applied, you can see that looks a lot more connected. Of course, I do need to go back in and make a few more corrections. And you can see my hand is starting to overlap one of the masks. So I would go through and rotoscope. 
But for now, I'm just going to convert both of those layers into one layer. So I'll click both of those, select pre-compose, and we'll call this levitate. And now you can see we've got this levitating layer all in one layer. So the top and the bottom are now connected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm first just going to pull the scale down. So I'll press S and adjust the scale just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Of course, though, we're going to need to add some shadows. So you can see there is light spilling in from the right of the frame. So I need to add a shadow of myself on the left of the frame here. So I'm going to copy that levitate layer. So that is command C, command V on Mac or on Windows. That is control C, control V. Then we'll go to that bottom layer. We'll go into levels, drop levels onto that layer. We'll just turn off this top layer for now so we can focus on this bottom layer. And then we'll just play with the gamma until that goes completely black. Then we'll go and search for blur. We'll drop a Gaussian blur onto this layer and we'll just increase the blur in us here. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, that hasn't done what we want it to do. So instead, we'll go to camera lens blur and we'll just increase that. And as you can see, that's not quite doing what we need it to do. So instead, we'll just drop that up above levels and that should help to sort that problem out as it has done. And now you can just go ahead and place this on the ground. So we'll pull this down. We'll go into basic 3D and we'll just rotate this around so that it now matches the same angle as the floor. So somewhere around there. Then we'll go into rotation and we'll just rotate this around. And then we'll add some swivel in as well, just so that we can match this all up perfectly. That's roughly about right. Then if we turn on the top layer, you can see that's roughly what we have. So that looks like a fairly convincing shadow, but it's probably just a little bit too harsh. So to tone this down, we're just going to press T on the keyboard to load opacity and pull the opacity all the way down. And then, of course, this should not be obstructing this wall here. So I'm just going to copy this bottom layer. Move that to the very top. We'll go to the pen tool and I'm just going to draw a mask around this wall here. And with that at the top, you can see the shadow has now disappeared behind this wall. So that looks great. And of course, as well, if you wanted to, you could add another shadow in so we can copy that shadow layer. And we'll just rotate this around so that it is now hitting the back wall instead. There you go, something like this. And then we can increase the, the blur in us on there. And we can pull the opacity down just a little bit more on this one. And as you can see, you've got two shadow layers now here in the frame. Of course, though, at the moment, this static shot is kind of giving everything away. Because this is a static shot, instantly our minds are thinking this is fake. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select everything. Right click and select pre-compose or we'll press OK on this. You can rename that if you wanted to. Then we'll go into effects and preset and search for wiggle. And we can drop any one of these on or alternatively, you can just go into the drop down arrow, select transform, go into position. We'll hold option on the keyboard if you're on Mac. I'm not entirely sure of the keyboard shortcut on Windows, but I'll put it on screen for you now. And then we're just going to type the expression wiggle open brackets three comma ten and then do not press enter click outside of the box to complete that expression and that's just going to add a little bit of basic handheld movement there as you can see though there is a lot going on here so that might take a moment to render so i'm just going to go into the pre-comp and i'm just going to turn off all of the layers except for the background layer just so we can see what this wiggle looks like and as you can see, that might be a bit intense potentially. So we'll just go back into wiggle and we'll pull the first number down to two and we'll render this back out. And you can see that now looks a lot more natural, but the problem is the edges are now appearing. We can see this black edge. So we'll just go into effect and preset and search for motion tile. Drop that onto the pre-comp and then we'll select output width, change that to 300 output height to 300. We'll select mirror edges and the edges are now filled in. Essentially, the motion tile is just mirroring the edges. So if we turn this off and we move the position all the way up here and then we turn motion tile on, you can see it's just filled that in there. But we don't want that effect. So we'll just pull that back, turn the motion tile back on 
and we've got ourselves this really awesome levitating effect. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope it was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you do happen to do this levitation effect, then please do send the footage to me because I would love to see your work. You can upload this to your YouTube channel and send me the link. You can upload it to your Instagram and send me the link, or you could just email it to me. Whatever works for you, I would love to see your work. So please, if you do create this effect, please do share it with me because I would love to see your work. But thank you once again for watching this video and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.